question about, I have a question on how to best involve the entire faculty in this process, draft and ask for comment, or there are other ways around it. Um, and I'll mention also that when we're reviewing them internally within these workshops, we're not going to be sharing them publicly. And so it's not like you're not committing your department to anything. But OK, sorry, the bigger picture question of how do we get faculty involved? Part of that is knowing your faculty, right? There are some faculty that will do best if you have a draft. There are some faculty that will do the best if they feel engaged before there's a draft. I, I don't know there's a general answer to that. We do have a couple of hands raised. Beth. Yeah, just a follow on question to the conversation. And this is really the, the, the benefits of faculty buy in. So, you know, whether or not you have a report or a draft in front of you or not a draft in front of you, but it seems to me that there's benefit to getting faculty buy in early in the process. So I, I guess just those that have gone through this in their own institutions, can, can you speak to that, uh, that benefit? I think and it's how really, you went about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important and you can imagine that um, your goals are minimal in this first version. So a department plan that just lifts, lists your existing activities and then the goal is that you continue these activities might be completely non-controversial where it's just a documentation act and you can push it through because no one's left out. We're just trying to make sure we've captured all that we're doing. And then as your department is interested and in wanting to expand what they're doing, then they can be shaping those goals. So I would imagine you could just like almost include your goals would be super underwhelming. And it's just a documentation task at first. That's my recommendation. Question about there's a lot of data collection that we need to do. And actually your goals can be exclusively focused on data collection in the beginning. You know, that we're gonna try and work with the institutional research and get this data and you might fail. Um, but those are important goals to get started with. And I, there's another comment about student enrollment is very important. Will you be talking about how to involve students um, and or other stakeholders to be involved in really systematic change? On that, I'll point out there are a lot of things that are important and they're a potentially different set that are doable, right? And so balancing the most important versus the easiest is going to be an individual institution decision. Um, depending on your institution, changing enrollment may be very easy or very hard, and so on with many of the other strategies. Yeah, and I love it. The, the question, just to clarify, um, we got a little note, was about like involving students in this process of creating this departmental plan. Um, I think that's a great thing to do. Um, and, and there are resources under evaluation for thinking about different surveys that you might include, different um, uh, focus groups you might do to try and gather information in addition to including uh, students explicitly in the process of creating this. Yeah, Wendy actually made a note about um, not rushing things but also being thoughtful and so that's really important because we, um, Jeff mentioned this, Margaret mentioned this, we want these plans to be impactful. But at the same time, as Luther noted, they are living, breathing documents. So we want to make sure that um, you start with something doable for your department and um, try to build on that and be thoughtful throughout the process. But um, so it's a balance between wanting to make sure the plan is impactful, but also try wanting to get started as well. Quick question for you. In creating the actual departmental plan, uh, I need to know, and this is something I tried to do in the chat, but I guess it just wasn't getting through. Um, I actually want to know what are the, when we're creating the plan, part of the plan is talking about the things that you're currently doing. Are the things that you have done previously? What time span would you think would be the most adequate um, for example, do we want to go four years forward? Do we want to go four years backwards? Do we want to go, you know, wh what time frame are you talking about? Because these institutions have hundreds of years and, you know, I just want to know what you're talking about in general. I think that different activities are going to have different time spans. If I'm going to collect retention data, that might be something I can do relatively quickly and then plan to repeat every year. Um, but for the departmental plans, we're imagining that most institutions are gonna to wanna to revise theirs after like six months to a year. 
And so even if you're planning things for longer durations, you might come and re revise those. And then the second piece is we're imagining most uh, departments might want to create about a five-year plan. And the reason for that is that PIs might use this resource or a supplementary document with that department plan to figure out what activities they can get involved in. And so the department plan provides a snapshot of what's going on in terms of BPC that a PI might be able to plug into. Uh, and so it's sort of their point of contact to figure out what, what, how to engage. But I think I'm still sort of not capturing all the, 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 the bigger piece of your um, question. Yeah, the bigger piece is, is if, we, if I was going to write a paper, you're going to tell me what resources you want and how, how early they need to be or what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So I'm about to write this paper and revise what we have on, on, in our, in our, uh, what we already have written. But I need to know, do you want something that happened four years ago that is an ongoing process that's yeah. still going on? Uh, for example, the ESEP program was actually in our institution, right? So do I put that if it's no longer in our institution, if it left like a year ago? Or is it something that's important? I want to know what what are the parameters around this? Like, give me some more clarification on this. I think if it's no longer going on, you could leave it out. Uh, if it is ongoing, and particularly if PIs could get involved in it, then I think it's really helpful to include. The level of detail in the activities that you include in these plans are going to vary substantially. There might just be a few words for some and a paragraph for another. Uh, and so there can be imbalance in that, but, but thinking about your department as being a reader of this document. And if they, so you might have, we have a number of programs for K-12 outreach. And if that's not the focus of your plan, you might just say that and then provide the name of the person they should contact if they wanna get involved. But actually the majority of your plan is describing your recruit, your retention strategies. Uh, and so there are gonna be some things that are really abbreviated and that's okay. Part of the BPC, the department BPC plan is to help project plans get written. And so you want the faculty who are, per, or the PIs that are reading through it to be able to identify an activity they will commit to doing during the duration of their project grant. And so that sort of gives a time window, right? It shouldn't be longer than a project grant could cover because then who's going to engage in it? Um, but you might be able to take off of a longer term project, a smaller piece, if it's not currently ongoing, people wouldn't be grabbing it either. 